How to make a wind vane. Make a simple wind vane and you'll soon be able to amaze others with your ability to forecast weather. You will need two paper plates, scissors, poster board, a plastic straw, a straight pin, a pencil with a new eraser, modeling clay, glue, and a compass. Optional, crayons and a styrofoam plate. Step one, write the four directions, east, west, north, and south, equally spaced along the outer edges of an inverted paper plate. Make the project personal by decorating the plate with crayons. Step two, use scissors to cut an arrow point and an arrow tail from poster board, making each about two inches in length. Cut the shapes from a styrofoam plate if poster board is unavailable. Step three, make small slits at each end of the straw using scissors. Step four, Place one of the poster board shapes into a slit at each end of the straw to create an arrow. This will later point to the direction the wind is blowing. Step 5. Insert a straight pin through the center of the straw and then into the eraser tip of the pencil, making sure to leave ample space for spinning at the upper and lower sides of the straw. Step 6. Set the pencil by pushing its point through the center of the paper plate and then sticking it into a lump of modeling clay serving as a base. Test the wind vane by gently blowing it. Step 7. Place the structure on a second paper plate and then glue the plates together with the clay mound inside. Step 8. Move the wind vane outdoors after the glue dries and then align the directions using a compass. Watch the arrow go to work. By learning what type of weather is associated with wind directions in your area, it's a breeze to forecast conditions. Did you know, as of 2008, Dodge City, Kansas was the windiest city in the United States. How to make a rain gauge. How much rain did that big storm drop? Make your own rain gauge and you'll always know the answer to this important weather question. You will need a ruler, clear waterproof tape, a straight-sided glass jar, glue, a wood block, and a rainy day. Step one, attach a ruler to the inside of the glass jar using clear waterproof tape. Make sure the ruler touches the jar bottom. Break the ruler in half to better fit inside the jar. Step two, glue the jar to a block of wood to create stability in strong winds. Make sure the wood block is heavy enough to stand up to tumultuous weather. Step three, place the jar in an open area where the weather forecast calls for precipitation. Avoid placing the rain gauge beneath trees, next to your home, or other structures. Step four, Measure the rainfall as soon as possible after a rain to avoid loss from evaporation. Calculate the measurement to the nearest tenth of an inch. Step 5. Record rainfall measurements from your rain gauge for a period of months to track precipitation and compare months and seasons. Now, use your data to your advantage and plan the best time for your favorite outdoor activities. Did you know? As of 2008, Las Vegas was the driest major U.S. city receiving 4.49 inches of rain annually. How to make a simple electric motor. If projects like the potato power digital clock are a bit old school, up your game with a simple electric motor to wow the judges at your next science fair. You will need three feet of 22 or 24 gauge insulated wire, one D cell battery, a pair of wire strippers or scissors, a permanent marker, one plastic cup, two disc magnets, two large paper clips, two large rubber bands, and four alligator cable clips. Step one, coil the wire around the D-cell battery several times. Remove the coil and wrap the ends around two sides of the coil to hold it in place. Leave three inches of wire lead on each end. Step two, strip both ends of the wire coil leads. Hold the coil vertically and coat one half of one lead with a permanent marker. Apply a second coat of ink. The ink coating is very important as it allows a break in the magnetic field to keep the coil spinning. Step three, turn a plastic cup upside down and place one disc magnet on top while putting the other inside the cup against the roof to hold both magnets in place. A clear cup works best to display your work and to prove there are no other mechanisms. Step four, Straighten the outside ends of both paper clips to form a P. Attach the paper clips to the cup using two large rubber bands to build a cradle for the wire coil. Step five, balance the coil inside the paper clip cradle loop. 
Adjust the height so the coil just misses the magnets when it spins. Attach an alligator cable clip to each paper clip just above the rubber band. Step 6. Connect the D-cell battery to the coil using the other two alligator clips. Be sure one end is connected to the positive side and the other to the negative side of the battery. Give the coil a gentle spin. Step 7. Adjust the balance of the coil and the distance between each paperclip cradle. Experiment with the configuration until you have a working motor. Did you know? In 1899, Thomas Edison believed electricity would run the cars of the future. He spent a decade trying to perfect an electric car battery, but was ultimately defeated by gasoline power. How to make a simple lava lamp at home. Lava lamps are as easy to make as they are fun to look at. You will need an empty plastic soda bottle with a cap, vegetable or mineral oil, food coloring, and an effervescent tablet like Alka-Seltzer. Optional, sequins and glitter, salt, and a flashlight. Step one, empty and thoroughly rinse a large plastic soda bottle. Step two, pour vegetable or mineral oil into the bottle until it is three quarters full. Step three, fill the rest of the bottle with water. Step four, add several drops of the food color of your choice. Get creative. To make things more interesting, add sequins or glitter to the mixture. Step five, break an effervescent tablet like Alka-Seltzer into several small pieces. Step six, drop a piece into the bottle. Watch the oil begin to fall to the bottom and then rise in small droplets. Step seven, continue adding the tablet pieces until they have all dissolved. Don't have an effervescent tablet? Slowly pour table salt into the mixture to create the same effect. Step eight, put the cap back on the bottle. Begin slowly moving the bottle back and forth in your hands until the oil droplets begin to form one big glob. Step nine, enjoy the show. To really bring out the colors of the blob, illuminate the bottle with a flashlight. Did you know? In 2006, the town of Soap Lake, Washington agreed to spend $100,000 to install the world's largest lava lamp, which is 50 feet tall and had been on a billboard in New York City's Times Square for several years. How to make a spectroscope. If you're itching to discover the wonders of the world around you, this guide will have you gazing at the unique spectrum fingerprint of each element right at home. You will need a CD or DVD disc, a small cardboard box, a ruler, a black marker, a toilet paper tube, a utility knife, cellophane tape, a protractor, aluminum tape or foil and glue, and two razor blades. Optional, black paint. Always use caution when using a utility knife and have an adult help if needed. Step one, place the CD or DVD outside the box against one side about one half inch from the bottom. Trace the small spindle hole in the middle with a black marker. This is the height of the viewing port. A tall shoe box will work as long as it is taller than the disc. Step two, trace the toilet paper tube circle over the CD spindle hole. Move the tube over one half inch and trace another circle. Connect both circles to make an oval and cut out the shape using a utility knife. Step three, tape the toilet paper tube halfway through the port at a 60 degree angle using plain cellophane tape and a protractor. Seal around the tube with aluminum tape or tin foil and glue to block out all light. Paint the inside of the box black for better viewing. Step four, turn the box a quarter turn clockwise and use the CD to measure another hole. Cut out a small slit through the circle one half inch wide and two inches tall. Step five, tape both razor blades together on the box so their sharp edges almost touch. Make a very small sliver of light through the slit cut in the box. If the light is too dim, your blades are too close. If the spectra is blurry, your blades are too far apart. Step six, tape the CD or DVD inside the box opposite the razor blade slit with the rainbow or prism side out. Try to offset the CD from the box wall the same distance as your razor blades. Step seven, seal the box completely using aluminum tape or foil and glue. Peer through the toilet paper tube, point the razor blades at a light source, and gaze at the color spectrum of the world around you. Did you know? Astronomers use powerful spectroscopes and computers to study the composition of stars and planets millions of light years away from Earth. How to make a water wheel. Follow these instructions to build a model water wheel project and experiment with hydropower. You will need a two liter plastic soda bottle, a metric ruler, a marker, 
a craft knife, scissors, two corks, a wooden barbecue skewer, cotton thread, a fishing sinker or other weight about one ounce, and a sink. Step one, measure and mark eight centimeters up from the bottom of the bottle in three or four places around the bottle. Then draw a line around the bottle connecting your marks. Using the craft knife, cut along the line to remove the bottom of the bottle. Step two, use the same method and cut an eight centimeter wide section from the middle of the bottle. Measure, mark, and cut four two centimeter wide strips from the center section and use scissors to cut the strips in half so you have eight strips that measure four centimeters by two centimeters. Step three, draw eight evenly spaced lines around the cork and make slits through the lines using the knife. Then slide one of the plastic strips into each slit. Make sure the strips all curve in the same direction. Step four, measure and mark two points on the rim of the bottom section, 12 centimeters apart. Then measure three centimeters up from the bottom of the base section and make a point halfway between the points on the rim. Draw and cut a deep arc from one point on the rim through the point in the middle and back up to the second point in the rim. Step five, poke two holes in opposite sides of the base, just below the rim. Then cut the skewer in half and thread each half through one of the holes and into the ends of the cork. Make sure that the skewer halves are wedged tightly into the cork and that they have room to spin in the holes in the bottle base. Step six, push the other cork firmly onto the end of one of the skewers and tie one end of the length of thread around the cork. Then tie the loose end of the thread to a fishing sinker. If you don't have a fishing sinker, you can use another weight. Step seven, put your water wheel in the sink and turn on the water. Watch the water turn the wheel and see if it produces enough energy to wind the string around the cork and lift the sinker. Once you're able to lift the sinker, increase the weight and see how much you have to then increase the water pressure to lift it. Did you know hydropower was used as long ago as 100 BCE when the Greeks and Romans placed vertical water wheels in streams or rivers to grind wheat and corn. How to make a weather barometer. Be a backyard meteorologist with your own homemade barometer and make weather forecasts like the pros. You will need a clear straight neck glass bottle, a clear glass jar, food coloring, a rubber band, and an appropriate place to station the barometer. Step one, wash a 12 ounce clear glass bottle that has a straight neck and an 18 ounce clear glass jar, making sure to remove any labels. An empty 18 ounce peanut butter jar is a good choice for this barometer project. Step two, assemble the barometer by first placing the bottle inside the jar in an inverted position. Fill the jar with just enough water to come up over the mouth of the bottle by an inch or two. Step three, add a few drops of food coloring to the water before slightly tilting the jar to allow air bubbles to release from the bottle. Step four, place the rubber band around the outside of the jar at the water level. Step five, find a spot to set up your barometer station where it's not exposed to direct sun, artificial temperature changes, or in a location where it could be accidentally tipped over. Step six, observe water levels rise as air pressure rises to predict fair conditions and drop as pressure falls to predict rain. Now you'll never have to look farther than your own barometer station to forecast the next picnic day or when to pack an umbrella. Did you know? Since 1977, Banner Elk, North Carolina has celebrated the weather-predicting woolly worm with an annual festival.